Hi, I'm Beth Blackerby. I'm the creator of violinlab.com. And this um, video is for my YouTube subscribers. Um, at times I take content from Violin Lab, which is um, my website. I have almost 280 videos on violin playing, lots of detail, lots of information. Um, but I do extract some content and, and make videos for, for YouTube. So the, what I wanna talk about um, today, what I wanna present um, is information on a habit, a bad habit that I think um, really is very crippling to violin playing. Um, if you do this, chances are you're not, you're not going to be able to progress to the level that you, you really want to. And that is squeezing. Uh, some colleagues call this the death grip. It's clenching with the left hand on the neck of the violin. And this is, is so common. I've seen it with all my students, any private student I've ever taught. It's always been an issue and we always have to work through it. So chances are you might be experiencing the same thing. Here's why I think it happens. In a, fundamentally, um, we are holding um, an object and it's light, but it's not that light. We're holding it up with our head, our head and our shoulder. And it's just not natural. It's not the most natural thing you'll ever do. And then when we use fingers, we, we're putting vertical pressure down here where we have no support. We have no natural support down here with the scroll. And so if you just do this exercise, just hold it and just push down on your scroll and just feel what you have to do with your head. You have to provide a good amount of counter pressure to this vertical force that's pulling down, pulling the violin down. <clears throat> so, so just fundamentally, we, we lack the support at this end of the violin. It's very natural to want to support it with the left hand. I have seen um, information out there from um, people making videos suggesting that you rest the violin on the left hand. And I would like to say, no, you do not rest the violin on the left hand. If you do that, if you are letting your left hand, you know, if you're creating a little V or a cradle and you're resting that violin, you're going to squeeze. You're not going to be able to develop vibrato. You're not going to be able to shift. Um, your hand will be tight. There will be tension in your hand and it will cripple your, your progress. So this is such an important um, issue and that's why I'm, I want to share it with you. Okay, so back to why, why this happens. Um, and, and I told you, basically um, it comes from a, a feeling whether it's conscious or unconscious of, of insecurity holding the violin. So the first thing you have, to, um, you have to tackle is to make sure that you are so well set up and so comfortable holding the violin that it's really not an issue, that you feel free enough to be able to drop your hand, you can hold the violin, you could do anything, you, you're not, you don't feel like it's going to drop. So that's the, the, the first thing to really look at. It's worth taking the time and spending a little bit of money on trying shoulder pads that, that will, will give you that kind of security. Spend the time adjusting them. All, the shoulder pads, they come in many varieties, and um, I do have a video at Violin Lab on the different kinds of shoulder pads, but um, they, they can lengthen. You can, these legs go up and down to fill in the, um, give you the necessary support you need here. So, you know, give that um, a good amount of, 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 of focus. So then once you're set up well, okay, we need to really train ourselves to believe that we have that kind of security, that we don't really need to support the violin with the left hand. And <clears throat> if you're not sure whether you're clenching or not, okay, you may not even be aware of it, um, but just play the very opening of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And when you get to the first finger on the E string, don't know if you'll be able to see this, but look, look at this part of your hand. Look right here on the inside edge. Look at this knuckle and there's a little line. There's that first line between your hand and your finger and, and see what happens. So when you're playing Twinkle Twinkle, when you put that first finger down, what happens with that knuckle? If it immediately glues to the side of the neck, 
if it glues, if that line starts to dip underneath the edge, um, right here, the edge of the fingerboard, if it starts to drop underneath, when you, when you push that finger down or when you press the string down, that's really a, a sign that you're squeezing unnecessarily. So look at that, examine, see whether or not you're doing that. Um, the next thing then is, is to, let, let's understand how the finger does keep the string down without having the tendency to squeeze with our thumb. So, so the culprit really is the thumb. The thumb wants to um, press in and provide counter pressure to that vertical force of the finger holding the string down. So that's what happens. The thumb, the thumb feels a need to respond to the pressure. Whoops, I'm out of picture. And 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 the thumb will will squeeze in return. Okay. So, what does really happen? Because you can't really be pressing your fingers down without some sort of counter pressure. Okay. We don't quite have enough um, with our head just to press the fingers down without anything else. So. I want you to experience this. This is, um, it's, well, it's gonna seem strange at first, but, but hold your violin, hold it like this, and, and let your hand just rest on top of the violin, okay? And then just, if it's relaxed, and make sure it's very relaxed, just try to scoot your hand around, okay? It's really hard to do. There, the, the skin, the skin of our fingers, our, our skin already provides this natural amount of friction and an adhesiveness, okay? So it just, it, our hands, our skin wants to adhere to the wood anyway. Um, now, as soon as you tighten your hand, okay? Now do this, now put tension in your hand, kind of make your fingers really stiff like this, and when that happens, your hand will scoot along. But if it's relaxed, the skin, the skin has its own natural stickiness. So our thumb, the, the skin of our thumb, okay, does, provides that same service. When we play, when we, when we hold those strings down, and I'd like to suggest to you to think that um, we hammer the strings down, so we have finger action, we hammer the strings down. Once that string is down from the force of the blow, okay, it doesn't take that much energy to keep the string down. So we only really need a teeny, teeny bit of counter pressure. And that counter pressure is gonna come in the form of a vertical movement. And when I mean movement, I don't mean a real movement. I just mean a small force um, of upward, upward move, upward counter pressure with the thumb. And what it does is it pulls the skin. It pulls the skin, let me see if I can get a better um, visual of this. It, it pulls the skin kind of away from the nail. Okay. And, and just, just do this, do this on your own. Just push the finger, first finger and feel the thumb, feel the tug, feel the tug of the skin away from the nail. And that's that thumb sort of rising a little bit, giving a little bit of counter pressure, but vertically not horizontal, and that's what happens usually um, when you're learning to play, is when you push that string down or hold the string down, the thumb will squeeze in, to, into the neck. Okay, that's what we don't want. So it's really restructuring the way this mechanism works. You know, we, we species, we human species, we have opposable thumbs, we're used to using them, so it's very natural to want to squeeze in when we use these fingers. So this action of the finger comes down, the thumb gently is gonna pull up, you'll feel that. It doesn't really move, the thumb doesn't really move, okay? But there is just that, that nice natural friction against the thumb. So that's really the way to start um, being very aware of how your left hand um, works. A lot, some teachers ask students to practice without the thumb. Um, I, I'm not sure that always works. Um, I've tried that with students and what happens is sometimes they, they'll keep the string down and then they'll hold their thumb out. And then when they hold their thumb out, 
the thumb still gets very tight and tense. And, I, and then you still see this knuckle touching the neck. You, so you see something very awkward like this. Um, rather, what I want you to do is to um, strike the string down, hold it down. Think of, your, think of your finger as like a hanger, a clothes hanger, you know, that, that the strength of the hanger comes in this bend and it hangs. Even if you have a heavy coat on that hanger, it's still very strong. So that strength is gonna come underneath the finger. So these knuckles, the strength comes here. It's, um, it's enough to keep the string down. Doesn't mean that these knuckles aren't flexible because we still need that flexibility for vibrato. But there is enough strength there. So key into that, strike the string, hold it down, and then just move, move that, that thumb around. Just kind of wiggle it and see that there is some flexibility. See that there is, you can put a little bit of space right in here, okay, in between the side of your hand and the neck of the instrument. See that there's a little sliver of space. Now you don't have to maintain space. It's not something that's static. We, we don't say there must be space at all time because that's not really the reality. The side of your hand can touch the side of the neck. It can touch. It will touch when you play on the G string because the finger has to come around. The hand um, has more of the neck in, in your hand when you're playing on the G string. So the, 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 it will naturally touch. When we shift, we sort of navigate the distance of the shift by lightly touching here on the inside of our hand. That's sort of how we, we can measure um, on, on that subconscious level. So, so the hand does touch the neck. It just doesn't squeeze. And, and that's the distinction. That's what you have to really, to really monitor. So um, I encourage you to look at that. And then if you are learning vibrato, vibrato is a, a great remedy to, to learning to not squeeze because in order to vibrate, your hand can't be touching. So even if you're not, um, even if you're not doing vibrato, doing simple vibrato exercises, and at Violin Lab I have maybe 20 videos in total on, on vibrato, but learning those vibrato exercises will help loosen and the hand and disengage sort of this um, squeezing mechanism down here between the thumb and the hand. So you want to be able to... You want to have that complete um, relaxed left hand. The fingers are just are moving like this with very little um, action with your thumb. That's that's sort of the message of, of this video. Um, I hope, hope that gives you some information, something that you can use um, to, to better, to, to extend your, your technical range, um, to improve.